Welcome to Mucos Hardware. After I have tested a few Intel LJ1151 mutants such as Intel QQLS, QQLT and QTJ2, people started to ask me about QTJ1 and these custom-made IHS heat spreaders which are Chinese putting on top of these laptop mutants. So, this time I have decided to answer both of the questions at the same time and I have ordered myself QTJ1 from Taobao which uses this custom IHS or custom integrated heat spreader on top of the CPU. The CPU has arrived to me from China and for this testing I have purchased myself ASRock B365 Pro 4 motherboard. If you've seen my previous video where I have tested my mutants using a Gigabyte Z170 motherboard, that motherboard has pretty bad VRM and that VRM is not enough to power up 8-core CPUs. So, ASRock B365 Pro 4 motherboard. This motherboard does not have the best VRM and arguably it's probably not even the mediocre VRM. It's slightly less than average, but it's still much better than what I have had on my Gigabyte Z170. Other than that, the motherboard costed me just 85 euros, which is insane value because the motherboard comes with all possible and all needed features you would need for a modern gaming computer. My only complaint about the motherboard is the lack of a display port. Intel UHD 630, which is available on most of the LJ1151 CPUs, is able to output 4K resolution at 60Hz using DisplayPort. Unfortunately, this resolution is not available using HDMI, which means that if you have a 4K monitor, you will have to add an external graphics card and you will not be able to use this motherboard with integrated graphics card. Even though B365 chipset natively supports Intel Core i7 and i9 CPUs 8000 and 9000 series, to be able to use these laptop mutants, you still need to modify the BIOS and add required microcodes and apply certain fixes. So in my case, I have made the BIOS myself, it was pretty easy, I spent just a few minutes using the Coffee Time application. All information about the Coffee Time application and the BIOS you will find by the link in the video description, so if you're interested, follow up there and you will find the answers. After you have created a modified BIOS with the support for these mutants for your LJ1151 motherboard, you have to flush it onto the motherboard. That's why you need to use an external flash programmer such as CH341A and I have a tutorial how to use that external programmer. If I will not forget, I will add a link to that video either here or here. So, once I have got the modified BIOS on my motherboard, installed QTJ1 and assembled my test bench, I have started the computer and started my testing. Unfortunately, immediately after that I have figured out that my CPU temperatures are absolutely outrageous. Even with the slightest load, the CPU was cooking itself up to 100 degrees Celsius and was starting to throttle or crash. My first guess was that the cooler I am using is simply not capable enough to cool this CPU. At that time I have used my Be Quiet CPU cooler. It's this one, it's not big, but it has very flat and shiny surface, which is good to be able to cool mutants with a naked crystal. In my case, with the QTJ1, it has integrated heat spreader onto the crystal, so it's not very important, but still I just used the CPU cooler because I had it lying around. So the next step was to take my giant Noctua cooler. This beast is able to cool down basically anything, even overclocked Xeon E5-1660 V3, which consumes up to 200 watt of electricity, is able to stay cool under this Noctua cooler. Unfortunately, even after I installed this Noctua cooler on top of my QTJ1, I still didn't get any better results. The CPU was still cooking itself up to 100 degrees Celsius and throttling. So, obviously there were some other problem and it was not related to the CPU cooler itself. After spending some time and investigating the problem, I have figured out that the IHS on this mutant is simply not high enough to get a proper contact between the CPU and the cooler. After a few days of struggle and figuring out how to properly cool down the CPU, which was basically sitting almost under the LJ1151 mounting bracket of the CPU, I came to a solution. 
I have actually bought entire box of these uh, coolers and I have bought a few other models as a bulk order from China. If you will be interested, I will make a dedicated video about these CPU coolers and about some uh, niche problems when you are dealing with the Chinese and trying to make some business with them. But in my case, this cooler was the solution. Unfortunately, I was still not able to use the native bracket because the native bracket also has all the required safety features not to apply too much pressure onto the CPU and do not damage the CPU. So I have found some old mounting bracket which was left in my box from some other CPU cooler, I don't even remember which cooler it was, and used that other mounting bracket which was designed for another CPU cooler, but it let me squeeze down this uh, all-in-one liquid cooler onto the CPU socket and onto the CPU hard enough, so the CPU temperatures were staying somehow manageable, still not ideal, but at least the CPU was staying below 90 degrees Celsius and didn't throttle. And I was forced to limit my QTJ1 to 115 watt of electricity consumption during sustained load and 145 watt during the short period of time when the turbo boost is kicking in. The frequency I set to 4.3 GHz when all CPU cores are used, all the way up to 4.7 GHz if only one or two CPU cores are utilized. After solving the overheating problem and applying somehow decent overclock or at least somehow decent frequencies for the CPU, I decided to try to overclock my memory. And here I have got another disappointment. Unfortunately, the same as any other mutant CPU I have tested, QTG1 also has a problematic or rather weak memory controller. In my case, the CPU refuses to start with anything higher than DDR4-2400. Even if I try to use DDR4-2500, the CPU simply doesn't start. That's why all the tests will be conducted using DDR4-2400 CL12. Yes, I was able to tighten the memory timings to CL12. Once I have solved overheating, CPU overclocking and memory tuning problems, I have decided to go into the gaming test results. After that, I have installed my AMD RX 6800 XT just to figure out that PCI Express X16 slot on the motherboard doesn't work. Well, the slot physically was working, nothing was damaged, but it just didn't work with the CPU. After a while, I have decided to go back to the Coffee Time application, and this time I was a bit more careful. Looking at the possible fixes and possible patches, the PCI Express patch, which is usually available, was grayed out in my case. Initially, I thought that the patch is grayed out because it is not needed for the B365 motherboard, but it turns out that it was grayed out because Coffee Time was not able to properly apply this fix with this particular BIOS. Initially, I tried the latest BIOS available from the ASRock page, which was 4.30, but after I have figured out that Coffee Time is not fully supporting this BIOS, I have downloaded a previous version, which was 4.20, and that one is fully supported by Coffee Time. I was able to apply the PC Express patch, and after that, with this BIOS, the PC Express X16 slot works, graphics card works, motherboard works, everything works as it should. So there I was able to conduct all my test results, and let's take a look at them. Starting with Far Cry New Dawn. As expected, QTJ1 is significantly faster than Xeon E5 2678v3. Here we are getting 74 and 102 FPS for QTJ1 and only 58 and 84 FPS for Xeon E5. Obviously, Ryzen 5 5600X is faster than both of the CPUs. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This is a very well optimized game which uses DirectX 12 API. Here, all three CPUs are demonstrating basically identical performance. Ryzen 5 5600X and QTJ1 are slightly faster than Xeon E5. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, on the other hand, is a rather old game which uses DirectX 11 API, and here QTJ1 is catching up with Ryzen 5 5600X and leading Xeon E5 2678v3 rather substantially. QTJ1 gives us 28 and 74 FPS, Xeon E5 has only 26 and 60 FPS. Watch Dogs Legion is another rather modern title which also uses DirectX 12 API and pretty well optimized. Here, QTJ1, Xeon E5 2678v3 and Ryzen 5 5600X are demonstrating very comparable results. 
Of course, Ryzen 5 is slightly faster, but Xeon and QTJ1 are not that far behind. F1 2019 This fast-paced game really depends on the single-core performance. Here, QTJ1 is also significantly faster than Xeon E5 2678v3, 171 and 235 FPS in comparison to 145 and 208 FPS. Ryzen 5 5600X is much faster than both of the CPUs. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Sage, yet another fast-paced game where QTJ1 is significantly faster than Xeon E5 2678v3, 295 and 405 FPS in comparison to 285-345. Nevertheless, both of the CPUs are demonstrating very good performance with more than 200 FPS at all times. Combining all six games together, we can see that QTJ1 beats a Xeon E5, QQLS, QQLT overclocked to 4.5 GHz, and of course it beats QTJ2, which is not overclocked and has only six cores. Here it is important to mention that QQLS, which also has eight core 16 threads, even though it was overclocked to 4.5 GHz, it was limited to about 95 watt of electricity consumption due to the pathetic VRM of my Z170 motherboard. I also did not overclock cache or integrated memory controller in QQLS, which usually gives us some extra performance. Nevertheless, QTJ1 gives us very good result which is not that far behind from Ryzen 5 5600X. Of course it is not able to catch up with Ryzen 5, but the results are still pretty good. Comparing the performance in Cinebench R20, we see the following picture. Compared to Ryzen 5 5600X, QTJ1 is slightly slower when using single CPU core and basically equal to Ryzen 5 5600X when using all CPU cores. In CPU-Z we get basically the same picture. Ryzen 5 5600X is faster when using single core and slightly slower when using all cores. After all, QTJ1 has 8 cores and Ryzen 5 has only 6 cores. And finally, let's take a look at some power consumption figures. Here it is important to mention that I am measuring entire system power consumption and not just the CPU power consumption. If you have a more powerful CPU, the CPU will be able to load your graphics card higher and the graphics card will also start to consume more power. Under gaming conditions testing with the F1 2019 and Assassin's Creed Valhalla, both of my testing system with Ryzen 5 5600X and QTJ1 consume about the same amount of electricity. The power consumption was staying around 300 Watt. Even though the power consumption is the same, the performance is not the same. The system with Ryzen 5 5600X is constantly and significantly faster than QTJ1. Testing productivity benchmarks such as Cinebench R23 and Blender with the BMW scene, we are getting 138 watt with Ryzen 5 system and 165 watt with QTJ1 system. So the power consumption difference is there, and Ryzen 5 is obviously a more efficient CPU, but QTJ1 at 4.3 GHz is not that bad. Xeon E5 2678v3, which lost to QTJ1 with gaming and productivity, consumes significantly more power. During Cinebench R23 and Blender, system with the Xeon E5 2678v3 consumes around 200 watt, and while gaming, the same system consumes 335 watt, which is about 35 watt more than QTJ1, while the performance is not as good as QTJ1. So, what I can say in the conclusion. First of all, I really like QTJ1. 8 cores, 16 threads, decent frequency and ability to overclock, and all of this is costing you less than 200 years. The CPU can be installed on budget-friendly B365 motherboards, which pack all necessary features which you might need for a modern gaming or productivity computer. The CPU has its flaws such as power consumption, such as heat production, and probably the biggest problem is the limited memory controller. In my case, the CPU was limited to DDR4-2400. The worst of all is the packaging. In my case, I'm having this integrated heat spreader which was made customly by Chinese. The heat spreader is slightly lower or slightly shorter than the normal CPUs, which makes it next to impossible to keep the CPU cool, especially if you attempt any sorts of overclocking. For myself, I was able to solve this problem using some custom mounting from different CPU coolers to increase the pressure from the CPU cooler onto the CPU, but in your case it might be much more complicated because you do not have piles of mounting kits lying around which you have left after assembling different computers using different CPU coolers.
Thus, if you are planning to buy QTJ1 or any other LJ1151 mutant, I strongly recommend you to buy the one which has naked crystal. It is a bit more complicated and a bit more cumbersome to install the CPU onto the socket because you need to remove the current or already mounted bracket on the motherboard and use uh, some special adapter which is supplied with the CPU. But believe me, it is not that complicated and the cooling capabilities of this solution is much, much better than this custom-made Chinese IHS which simply doesn't work. Overall, QTJ1 Plus B365 motherboard such as ASRock B365 Pro 4 is a much better value than Quanon GX99 TF Plus Xeon EFI2678 V3. Recently, prices for the X99 Xeons and X99 motherboards have skyrocketed and make no sense. It is much better to buy B365 and QTJ1, QTJ2, QQLS, QQLT. Speaking of QQLS, I have done some preliminary tests on my ASRock motherboard and this CPU which has naked die is much easier to call on the motherboard and it is also able to sustain overclocked frequencies with more than 4 GHz on the on all CPU cores. So if you're interested, I might be able to do revisit for QQLS and test the CPU on my ASRock motherboard to see how far we can push this CPU on this motherboard and what kind of results we can achieve. At the moment, I plan to test engineering sample of Intel Core i9-11900, but if you're more interested to see how QQLS performs on my ASRock B365 motherboard, feel free to leave me a video comment or join my Discord and message me straight away right over there. For now though, that's all I can tell about my QTJ1 sample. I hope it was helpful, I hope it was interesting. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, goodbye.